Hello and welcome to the NBA DFS for Monday, November 27th. We are back. We're going to be breaking down this five-game slate. But before we do, come join us at LionStar. $39.99 per month gets you access to everything we do. All the sports, all the props, you get it all. Or the absolute best deal in DFS, the yearly $240 for a year gets you access to everything and Right now, we do have a Black Friday deal going on. All you got to do is click this little link for the Black Friday sale. What will pop up is the Jot form. Fill that out. Purchase your yearly subscription, and you will get a shirt and a hat for free with your sub. Come join us. Get involved. Let's get some. Let's have some fun. All right, now, let's get into this slate. So, Five Gamer. Uh, the three best games on the slate all happen to be early, but the injury news is pretty much all with the uh, the later games. The Denvers, Utahs, and then, you know, Pelicans still have a little bit due to CJ being out. So it makes for a little bit of an interesting slate because a little bit more of the value is in the back half, uh, but the more interesting games are in the front half. So there are some decision decisions to be made. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now let's get into this slate. Start with uh point guards and we will start on FanDuel Cause that's where I have liked the players for us today. So our high owned uh, players, Malcolm Brogdon, Dyson Daniels, Cade Cunningham, now, I don't mind any of them. I do really like Malcolm Brogdon. Cade Cunningham is meh, and Dyson is meh to me, but I absolutely understand why all of the ownership is going there. Brogdon, of these three, is who I'd be most likely to get to. I just think that he has a very, very legit ceiling. As you can see, Hit he's hit 50 twice, and he's high sevens. So, uh, makes a lot of reason to get there. Daniels has been okay at 5,500. I just think he's a little bit pricey. He absolutely could do mid thirties, but his normal is, you know, high twenties and high twenties at 5,500 just isn't really getting it done. Cade Cunningham has the ceiling. We do want, uh, in a very good game environment. So I understand why everybody's going here, and I would not shy away from him if I was going uh, getting him. Other guys I like. Uh, D'Angelo Russell. I think he's in a very good spot versus the Sixers team, which has a decently uh, total, and we've seen some real nice games out of D'Lo, you know, reaching or very close to 40 multiple times, mid 40s a couple times. So he has that ceiling we want. And this is a matchup where I think there is the potential for him to play a couple extra minutes. Lately, his minutes have kind of been all over the place. And that is a little bit of a scary situation. But if he does get like 34 minutes, he's going to crush the slate. The other thing to, to note is that LeBron is questionable again. Uh, AD is probable, so AD probably plays. But uh, if LeBron is out, then D'Lo is a smash. And we likely don't know, or sorry, that game is at 4 o'clock, so we will know that prior to game time. Tyrese Maxey, I really, really like Maxey this season. Uh, Mid-40s are happening all the time, and we've seen a couple games where he's had real, real nice ceilings. And I think he can exploit this Lakers team. The other thing is that uh, the Lakers are good about getting out and running and trying to do fast breaks. And that just happens to be Maxi's specialty because the dude is insanely fast. Uh, Jordan Clarkson's another spot I like here. I got to go uh, back to Clarkson, Clarkson here. And the reason being, so he just had, you know, two poor games, had a day off. But Walker or Larry uh, Lori Marketing is out. Clarkson definitely gets a little bit of a bump up, and if there is a chance that the Jazz stay in this game, it is absolutely going to be because Jordan Clarkson's 
filling the bucket. Uh, they're going to very much need him, Walker Kessler, John Collins, all the guys to do their part to stay in this game. And I think Kess, uh, Clarkson has a real, real nice ceiling. Reggie Jackson. So I talk about uh, value guys. So he's not super cheap, but I think he is pretty cheap on this slate. The reason being, Jamal Murray is still out, but Aaron Gordon is also out. And Aaron Gordon is a guy that does get a decent amount of assists, gets some rebounds, scores. He does a lot of things with the basketball. And without him and with a questionable joke kick, I think that the ball is going to be in Jackson's hand a little bit more. And if you really want to go there, you could say there's the revenge narrative. But um, I think it's an interesting spot for Jackson at low ownership in which he may have the ball in his hand a little bit more. And he's been playing pretty well lately. So I think he's an interesting uh, spot as well. Uh, over on DraftKings, let's check uh, the high-owned guys. We got Jaden Ivey, Malkin Brogdon, and Dyson Daniels. Ivey, I think, is fine. I think he's interesting. He has played super well as of late, and that's why he is chalk today. Uh, but... I don't think there's much of a ceiling. I think he can get to the mid thirties. We've seen that. I don't think forties with uh, Cunningham active is really a thing that's going to be in his wheelhouse. Um, but it is a very good matchup. So I understand why people are going there. I just think it's because median projections are kind of liking him off a couple good games as starter. Uh, but I do think he's playing a little above his head right now. He's playing, you know, more like a 0.95 fantasy per minute guy lately. And I think he really is more like a 0.85 in pricing is, uh, up because he's been playing well lately. Malcolm Brogdon talked about Daniels. We talked about now let's go over to the matchup. So Cade Cunningham very good matchup. One guy that we have not talked about and I want to is Tyus Jones. So Tyus is in an okay spot. I don't really like him uh, for DFS yet, but uh, Jordan Poole is questionable. If Poole is out, Tyus gets a big bump up in usage, huge bump up for his assist rate. So I think he becomes much more interesting. And with Poole out, he might pick up a couple more minutes as they'll need him, you know, to handle the ball. So I think Tyus is very interesting if Poole is out. Daniel's at the top of our uh, board here. We go to the bottom. There's George, Harden, and Maxi. I am not that concerned with Maxi being here. The reason being, Fox has gone off. Van Vliet has done well. Mays has done well. Uh, Donkick has done well. Uh, several very good players have done well, and Maxi is a good player. There's just a couple guys that have laid absolute duds versus uh, the Lakers, and I don't think Maxi is going to be doing that. All right, so shooting guard, high owned. We got Heald, Brogdon, and Cade. Uh, we talked about Brogdon, talk, talk about Cade. Buddy Heald, look, simply he is still too cheap if he continues to start. When he starts, he plays, you know, 28 to mid-30s minutes. And mid-20s is about his floor as a starter. And as we saw, he has a ceiling where he can hit, you know, mid-40s or 50. So makes a lot of sense that everybody's going to him. And I will probably go to him quite a bit. Other guys I like that we have not talked about, Herb Jones. Uh, Herb is a guy that I've been on a lot lately. He can just score in a lot of different ways. Good game environment with uh, 232 total. Uh, you know, it profiles to be only a 5.5 spread. So very interested in that. And as long as he stays out of foul trouble, he's going to play some decent minutes here. He has had some foul trouble the last few games. Really, since coming back, he's just been getting a lot of fouls, but he's a really good defensive player. So that's going to happen from time to time. If he can stay out of a little bit of foul trouble, get his 34 minutes or so. I uh, think he can do pretty well, even at his lofty price um, at low ownership. It's a decent pivot. I think KCP uh, look, his price is getting up there a little bit, but with Murray out with Gordon out, I think he's going to play a lot of minutes 
And with that, I got to take some swings at low ownership. And going over to shooting guard, uh, Justin Holiday is the only guy that we have not talked about. Look, with Aaron Gordon out, uh, he's going to play more minutes. He started last time, played 27 minutes, didn't really get it done for you. He's just not that great of a fantasy producer. I would say there's a very high likelihood of him starting again. So that's why his ownership's up, but... I don't love the play. I just don't think he is good at fantasy basketball. He doesn't score in a lot of ways, doesn't really get points. Uh, can he get there? Absolutely, he can. He is so cheap that it, he just needs a few shots falling and he gets there, but I don't love the play. Now, he is a very, very nice salary saver, so I understand why people are going there. Um, I'm just not going to go there much. And matchup tool-wise, Sharp, Pool, KCP are all looking good. I don't mind Pool if he plays. It's a great game environment, just not getting to a ton of them. Uh, who I am getting to and we haven't talked about is Brandon Ingram. I think Ingram's in a very, very interesting spot here. Uh, Zion is getting a ton of ownership and it very well could be an Ingram game instead of a Zion game. The one thing, this 9k price tag is hefty. Uh, so that would stop me from getting there a little bit on DraftKings. I like him better on FanDuel. All right. Uh, small forward, Heald, Kuzma. Harris are the three high-owned guys with Ingram still above 20. So we'll talk about him. Uh, well, we just did talk about him. Tobias is fine. Uh, 0.95 fantasy point per minute guy in a decent game environment. Mid-30s all the time. He ha can hit 40s. So at his price tag, he's worthy. Uh, it's just doubtful he's going to break a slate for you. Kuzma. Kuzma's been very good lately. I do think his price is getting a little high, uh, but I don't mind going there in this game environment. Herb Jones, we talked about. Kawhi Leonard, we have not spoken about yet. Uh, look, no Aaron Gordon. That is going to very much hurt the defense of the Nuggets. And if this game gets a little bit faster pace, Kawhi Leonard could absolutely crush. He's been flirting with 40, you know, can consistently since uh, Westbrook went on the bench and it's just been Harden, George, and Leonard. And he absolutely can hit in the 50s. So at 8,300, I am interested when nobody's going there. And, you know, not the best game environment being it is that it's a 218 total, but it is a shorthanded Nuggets team and there is a chance that uh, the Clippers could really jump on them. And we have talked about all the other liked players. So high owned guys on DraftKings, Holiday, LeBron, and Dyson Daniels. Uh, look, LeBron's fine. He's in a decent spot. He is really good at basketball. He has a decent history versus the 76ers. My issue with LeBron is is he's not getting you to the 60s, 70s very often. Uh, he's consistent, high 40s, low 50s, and at almost 10K, I, I don't love the ceiling. And let's check out the matchup for small forward here. So uh, Denny was popping up on DraftKings, and he is towards the top for the matchup tool, so that is interesting. Thompson... Towards the top of the matchup pool versus Washington. Great game environment, especially for his skill set where he rebounds, he gets steals, gets blocks. He does a lot of different things. Uh, adds some assists, you know, does it all. So I think he is interesting. Um, he does appear to be coming back down to earth a little bit. He's had, you know, a week that wasn't quite as good as his first couple weeks in the league. So I do like him, but I do have some reservations. I think his price is 
pretty high and could be close to, you know, as high as it'll be all season. Power forward, we got Zion, Kuzma, Tobias. I like them all. We've talked about them all. Uh, to touch about Zion, uh, Zion's on like three days rest. And typically after rest days, he plays a lot better. So I think the high ownership is warranted with that fact. It is also a very high game total. So I get why people are going there. Kuzma, we talked about. Uh, guys, we have not talked about. AD. AD has absolutely crushed the 76ers. I don't know what it is, but 54 last year versus him, 62, 70 versus him a couple years ago. He can get after the 76ers, get after Embiid. So I think he's very interesting. Now he is like super expensive, but for 1K more than uh, AD or LeBron, you get a guy that has regularly hit mid sixes uh, and can absolutely go into the 70s. So I personally like AD over LeBron. Kawhi we talked about, and that will do it for power forward. And on to DraftKings, high-owned Isaiah, uh, Isaiah Livers is the only guy we have not talked about. Look, he's playing 26, 23 minutes. He is in the rotation now, back healthy. Uh, he's super cheap. I would say that I probably would rather him than uh, Justin Holiday, but similarly, he is not producing very much for fantasy, you know, right around 0.5 fantasy per minute. You really need him to luck into more minutes for him to have any type of ceiling. And uh, power forward matchups, Zion, Isaiah Stewart, and Aaron Naismith. Uh, Naismith is questionable. We're not too sure if he's going to be playing here. So just FYI on that one. Uh, LeBron also is showing at the very bottom of the matchup tool for what it's worth with his high ownership. And get to the center spot, our high owned guys, Miles Turner, John Collins, Jalen Duren. Uh, I like them all. The one thing I do have to say about Collins is look, he's not playing center again, and his points per game have came down. They're right by where they were before he started playing center. So I think his price needs to fall down a little bit for him to really be worthy again of the. Um, of being played. I just don't like him as much as a power forward or uh yeah, I just don't like him as much as power forward. That's all I really can say about him right now. I don't love the price tag. I'm going to get to a little bit cuz it's a decent game environment for a short-handed team that doesn't have Lori Market in, but I don't love the spot, don't love the price. Jalen Duran, uh he likely starts today. Came off the bench last time. They were monitoring his minutes. My guess is he played, it's, you know, been a handful of days since he last played that he probably starts back into playing normal minutes. And I'm absolutely interested in him. If he does play, you know, his low 30s like normal, he has a huge ceiling. This guy has a motor. He can absolutely get rebounds, put shots back up, score the ball, get blocks, Kind of do it all. Uh, decent passer, too. So he definitely intrigues me. But uh, there is, you know, some worry as far as if he does not start. Miles Turner's fine. Great game environment. The one thing I would say is it is a 12 point total. And as is, he's only playing like 28 minutes a night. So there's a real chance that uh, 12 point spread, I, I mean. There's a real chance he it is a blowout and he only plays 24 minutes and doesn't pay off his hefty salary, uh, which would leave Jalen Smith in a better spot, who has been a beast lately. 1.19 fantasy points per minute coming off the bench. Just crushing if he gets a couple extra minutes and makes him interesting. But it is very, very hard for me to uh, 
project in a blowout. I don't like to do that. Uh, Daniel Gafford. I think Gafford is very, very interesting. Pretty much, or it is a thing that all of these games where he has 30 points have all been when he has played more than 24 minutes. He gets in a lot of foul trouble. Detroit is one of the worst teams about getting calls fouled on them. So I think you can likely project Gafford for a couple extra minutes than he normally would be. And if he plays his 28 minutes, 5,900 is too cheap. I think uh, mid-30s is likely in this game environment. Now, that is if he's able to play it. Who knows what happens because he does get in a lot of foul trouble. Uh, AD, we talked about Walker Kessler. Kessler played one game back, uh, five fouls in 21 minutes. Now, I would expect him to play extra minutes. Marketing is out, and uh, they're going to need him, frankly. So, I would expect that to be more like 24, 26 minutes. If you get above 26, then at 5,700, he looks real nice. He is a guy that can really score fantasy points. 1.18 fantasy points per minute uh, over his last five starts. And that is just the worry how many minutes he gets. Without market in there, he absolutely could get a little bit more. They uh, will need him. And on to DK, highest owned centers, Turner, Olenek, and Kessler. Olenek is pretty much for the all the same reason of Kessler. He likely does play more. Marketing's out. He could start. Uh, they could go, which, you know, they they do three big guys sometimes with Marketing, uh, Collins, and Kessler. So they could move Collins or Olenek to the three. And those three wouldn't overlap a ton throughout the game, but they do do that. Uh, but Olenek is interesting. He can definitely walk into some extra minutes, but that is a thing is he has to play extra minutes. And the only way you're really playing him is if he is starting uh, because that's pretty much the only time he gets more than 24, 26 minutes and less foul trouble to one of the big guys. Kessler we talked about and last but not least matchups AD top matchup on the board that's why I love it uh, a lot of guys have had real nice games against uh, Embiid and the 76ers I'd be attacking that Durin I'd be attacking it Miles Turner you know my worries I just don't know if his minutes get there but it is a very very good game environment of which Indy should rush Portland and Turner could be the one doing the crusher. Crushing. Joe Val Kessler is on that bottom side here. Uh, minutes are a worry, but I am very much intrigued there. So that'll do it for us, guys. We will be back tomorrow. Have a good one. Good luck. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the vid. Helps a ton. Bye.